Oh my goodness. Uh, hello, everybody. Thank you for coming. Uh, we're really excited to get into day two of activities. There's a a lot of stuff, it's gonna be a little bit complicated with all the Zoom and breakouts, but I'm hoping we'll we'll, we'll figure it out and we're tech, technology uh, savvy enough to do it. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen and I hope you all are gonna see the, the right thing. Um, so what does everybody see? Your FathomNet workshop slide. Fantastic, that actually worked. Okay, so, oh. I am not showing you the right slide. Give me a second. I promise things will get better as the day progresses. Um, so today we've got the welcome. Now we don't see your slide. Now we see your slide. Now you see your slides. So just a quick recap of what we went over yesterday. I think everybody can agree with me that uh, we are dealing with a deluge of data and uh, visual data in particular, and we have to figure out solutions or ways to to address this this problem. You know, researchers have been looking more and more seriously at artificial intelligence and trying to uh, leverage those uh, skills as well as tool sets to try and automate data um, based on you know, visual imagery uh, and results that we see here. Um, but unfortunately for us, and this is true for everyone, deep learning uh, requires vast amounts of labeled data. And it's actually that labeled data, which is the biggest bottleneck uh, that the community faces. But we built FathomNet with the hopes of trying to address that challenge. Um, and FathomNet is an open source image database for understanding our ocean and its inhabitants. It can be checked out at fathomnet.org. And we spent all day talking about, about this particular database. Uh, we also um, use Tater annotation tool, which was built by Ben Woodward and his group at Sea Vision. You know, they've been contributing immensely to the build, build out and growth of FathomNet. And so what they've been able to show, or at least uh, demonstrate, is that their annotation tool, Tater, can get data into FathomNet, and so can Ambari's video annotation reference system. We've built up an ecosystem of resources. Uh, this is at least the GitHub page for FathomNet. Uh, what you'll notice, right, is um, you know a variety of different repositories, including a Python API, uh, the FathomNet Model Zoo, which is where people can contribute their machine learning models to, um, and also a mechanism for a community feedback where people can let us know if there's any issues or um, you know any any challenges, etc. Uh, we also highlighted the FathomNet data use policy, and obviously this is really important to make these things very clear. We've uh, got two different sections essentially in this use policy between annotations and images. Annotations uh, are licensed under Creative Commons Attribution No Derivatives 4.0 international license, whereas the images are licensed under Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives 4.0 international license. And notwithstanding the foregoing, all of the images um, can be used for training and development of machine learning algorithms, regardless of who you are. Um, and there's also a disclaimer. We have other resources, including our Medium page that has uh, really helpful articles on how to um, you know, interact with uh, the ecosystem. We also have YouTube tutorials, and you can engage with us either on Twitter um, and you know, stay tuned for a Twitter bot in the near future, and I'll explain what that is. Uh, we also have a Slack space, um, and I included non-tiny URL links in the agenda document, so please check that out. Um, and we also have a, a, a Discord channel, or at least interact with one, thanks to the live stream oceanographic community. And so there's all these different ways that you can connect with FathomNet. I think that's pretty clear. Um, obviously, we have an email, and I'm hoping that that email will soon go to Kevin Barnard, who will be the uh, long-term administrator for uh, FathomNet instead of me. Uh, we've got the FathomNet website. We also have the GitHub, uh, the FathomNet blog, the YouTube channel, the, uh, which I want to remind you, please subscribe to it so that if we get more than 100 subscribers, I can get rid of that horrible uh, YouTube URL. We've got the Slack space. And then we also have that live stream oceanographic um, Discord channel. So as a reminder, right, FathomNet is in beta. Um, so what that means is it's still very, very much a work in progress. 
And this is a big reason for why we uh, want hosted this workshop. Not only do we want to share the vision and goals of Fathom It, but we also want to build community uh, and also generate feedback uh, for improved features that we can implement later this year. Um, and so what we're going to do today that's very different from what we did yesterday uh, is break down into separate discussion sessions that are focused on particular areas of interest. So if you're a taxonomist, if you primarily identify with being a taxonomist or a programmer or enthusiast or an educator, we have separate uh, breakout rooms or groups for you. So you will be paired up with uh, some of our esteemed, wonderful team members. And in the morning, they will explain some of the ways at least we've been thinking about uh, interacting with and using FathomNet. And then the second session uh, later on, we're going to have a lot more breakout groups. But this is where we want to hear from you all in terms of like how might you think we should make changes or improvements or modifications so that Fathomit can work better for your needs. But to help us get organized, um, we ask that you change your Zoom room name. And that's going to allow us to put you in the right breakout group. So if you've never done this before, um, you can click on participants and find your name. And when you hover on your name, you're going to see two buttons emerge, uh, the unmute button or more. And if you select the more button, you'll have a number of options that emerges. So rename is on there, click it and give yourself a name. Uh, but um, please be sure to include what breakout room you primarily identify with, and we're going to ask you to stay with that group for the entire day. Um, rename it. So now, not only am I really excited about this, uh, you it'll clearly be shown what you know group you, a member you're going to be in, and then we will uh, organize things so that uh, you, you're in the right place uh, at the right time. So please do that. Just a reminder. You know these are the different workout or uh, breakout groups. So the, the options are taxonomist, programmer, enthusiast, or educator. So it'll take a few minutes for you all to do that. And then just so you know, I will start these breakout groups. So we've got, somebody says repeat. I don't know what you want me to repeat, but enthusiast, educator, uh, programmer, and taxonomist. And then I've opened up the room, so you should be able, hold on. You should be able to select the room that corresponds to you after you rename yourself. And I cannot stress enough, you need to rename yourself. Otherwise, the, the second breakout session is going to be very, very difficult for us to, um, to make happen. And so the, the session leads, can you also reinforce that as well? Otherwise, the, the second breakout session is going to be a, a bit of a pain. All right, Katie, how are we doing on time? Is it time for us to hop into these groups? I think so. Yeah, we're, we're five minutes ahead of time. Wow, that's not going to happen towards the end of this. No, yeah. All right, so I'll see everybody in a, a breakout room. <laughs> 